Hey guys, this is Sunny from Rev Atlas and welcome back to yet another video and today we are going to be reviewing the camera setup of the Vivo X50 Pro smartphone. Now this is a very differentiated camera setup owing to the gimbal camera that it has and we were quite impressed with it overall and in this video we'll explain exactly why we were impressed by this. Now before we get this started, please do make sure to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications to avoid missing any videos from us in the future. Now let's begin the video. The X50 Pro has one of the best camera setups that we've seen this year particularly because none of the camera hardware that they've included is actually just for marketing purposes or gimmicks. This actually makes sense when you see that the primary camera is a 48 megapixel Sony IMX598 that has been customized for this phone and features gimbal optical image stabilization as well as f1.6 aperture. You also get an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with f2.2 aperture and 1x4 inch sensor size as well as two telephoto cameras out of which the first one is a 13 megapixel f2.5 camera which offers 2x optical zoom with 1x2.8 inch sensor size and 0.8 micron pixel size. Lastly you have an 8 megapixel telephoto camera with 5x optical zoom which is a periscope one that has an aperture of f3.4 as well as optical image stabilization. In terms of image quality, the X50 Pro is excellent thanks to the dynamic range as well as overall good colors which tend to oversaturate at times but even when it does it's tastefully done and it's also very quick to focus. At a glance the sharpness and detail are good but when you zoom in you'll notice that there is a bit of excessive noise reduction happening which also drowns out the details. In case you want additional details the sensor is actually capable of capturing better photos but you need to make use of the 48 megapixel camera mode in order to get better detailing. This however comes at the expense of more noise but then again it's not too bad and detail hunters like me would definitely prefer the 48 megapixel mode over the regular one at times where you need that extra bit of detail. When the light starts to drop this is where the X50 Pro shows its prowess and really begins to shine. Now we did a comparison between the Pixel 4 XL and the iPhone 11 Pro Max which are arguably two of the strongest low light contenders on the market and also two really high end phones. And the X50 Pro actually managed to shoot better low light photos than both of them especially in this image as you can see where the shadows are much better rendered and there are more details captured in the shadows compared to both the other phones on the X50 Pro. When you look at the XF information as well, it's evident that the X50 Pro went for a higher ISO level, but when you look at the resulting output, the ISO level does not really affect the noise all that much and the noise is more or less controlled on the 11 Pro Max as well as the X50 Pro, while the Pixel 4 XL has very high levels of noise. In terms of the overall sharpness and detail as well, the Vivo is probably the best among the three, but of course there is a bit of extra saturation added, especially in the grass, but then again, I would classify the X50 Pro as being the best among the three in terms of an overall looking image with correct exposure, good detail, sharpness and low noise levels, especially for a low light image. Now these were captured on night mode with all the three phones, but on the X50 Pro, even using the regular photo mode gives you decent results. But if you truly want to make use and advantage of the sensor, go for the night mode itself. Apart from that, you also have a very special mode in the night mode called style, where you can choose between four different effects and that gives amazing results overall, to be honest. And this is something that you really have to sit around and tweak with Photoshop or Lightroom if you really know what you're doing. But for the average user, these tools are really great and extracting that extra bit of creativity that they otherwise could not tap into without having proper knowledge of advanced photo tools. Now one of the reasons for this good performance in low light could definitely be attributed to the gimbal OIS which is really really well done in terms of the overall stability and definitely does help Vivo achieve better stability in terms of the overall image that it captures and even for videos which we shall talk about later. Coming to the ultra wide angle camera, this definitely offers a much more wider field of view and a more dramatic perspective compared to the primary camera, but there is a huge difference in terms of the sharpness and a drastic reduction in the amount of detail captured. Nonetheless, it still creates great frames overall when you look at it, but when you start to pixel peep, you'll definitely see the difference. The overall color tonality and the color reproduction remains quite similar, but then again, in certain situations, you do see a difference and we suggest that Vivo works a bit further on this to tweak it and make it better and more similar to the primary camera in that respect. Unlike the regular camera, the ultra wide angle camera does not perform very well under low light conditions owing to the small sensor. 
The night mode helps here too and while it is usable in artificial lighting conditions, when the light really drops you don't want to be using the ultra wide angle camera. Moving on to the periscope camera which offers you up to 60x zoom range but practically speaking you can use up to 20x with decent quality and up to 10x with very good quality. At 5x and 10x they are virtually indistinguishable from each other and you get great amount of sharpness and detail as well as great reach which definitely allows you to get very creative with your photos. And I would say the 60x zoom can be used more or less for obtaining information at a glance if you're far away and not for actually photo taking or documenting photos. The disparity between the color on the primary camera and ultra wide angle camera was larger than the disparity between the colors on the telephoto camera as well as the primary camera. Vivo has done a better job at actually making these two look closer to each other than with the ultra wide angle camera and that's definitely great. Optical image stabilization is very powerful on this and it does a great job as well at eliminating shakes even for someone without very steady hands. Now onto the last sensor which is basically the 2x optical sensor or rather the portrait sensor you can say because this is probably what you'll use ideally to shoot portraits or perhaps just to get that 2x reach. One of the main advantages of the X50 Pro is the fact that you can shoot portraits with the regular camera, the 2x camera as well as the 5x optical zoom camera. Now the periscope camera is something that usually does not allow for portrait mode even on high-end camera phones but in this it actually works and works pretty well. While the edge detection and the blurring is quite not as accurate as the 2x and 1x modes, it's still very acceptable and will give you great perspective especially in shots such as these. Portrait mode is actually very good considering how it is with the regular camera and the edge detection is also pretty good and while it's not 100% fail proof, it gets the shot right most of the time but at times it does make a few mistakes particularly around the hair. One of the benefits that we found compared to most other camera phones especially in the portrait mode was the fact that the shutter speed was pretty fast and that allowed you to freeze objects or subjects in motion without actually having motion blur. Now this is especially useful on phones such as the Pixel 4 XL but this is the first time that we are seeing a non-Pixel phone actually do it so well and kudos to Vivo for achieving that. One thing I wish they did better was the fact that this actually has some sort of a softening happening on subjects even with the beauty mode turned all the way off. I guess this is a characteristic that most people like in portrait mode but I personally feel that they should do away with this and the photos would look even better. While there is no macro camera on this, at least not a dedicated macro sensor, you actually have a macro mode that makes use of the ultra wide angle camera to capture photos and the resulting photos are actually pretty good and better than what you get with most camera phones with a dedicated macro sensor. The front facing camera is a 32 megapixel f2.5 sensor and this is housed in a display cutout at the upper left corner of the display. Despite what the specifications might suggest, the front facing camera is probably the weakest link on the X50 Pro as the images are not all that sharp and the dynamic range is also limited especially when you use the portrait mode where there is no HDR mode applied. Even the edge detection is not all that great and you do see some blurring bleeding onto your face as well when you take selfies. In terms of video recording, you can record up to 4K 60fps with the primary camera as well as the 2x telephoto camera while you can record up to a maximum of 1080p 30fps with the ultra wide angle as well as the 5x telephoto cameras. Now footage recorded with the primary camera is incredibly stable up to 4K 30fps but for some reason the 4K 60fps mode does not seem to be stable primarily because it seems to be lacking EIS and also the gimbal seems to be doing quite a bit of aggressive movements especially when you pan or tilt or move in a weird sort of direction and it seems to be overcompensating for the movement. Now I think with a bit of fine tuning this could actually be fixed but currently in the 4K 60fps mode is not all that great but in the other modes it does really really well. It's also worth noting that the 4K 60fps mode does not record in true 60fps considering that I have seen frame drops happening and this is also evident in the XF information as well. We're guessing that this could be the effect of using a Snapdragon 765G whereas most other smartphones that capture 4K 60fps use an 800 series or higher and while the 765G itself is a very powerful chipset perhaps it cannot really process all that bit of information especially at 4K. 1080p 60fps seems to do just fine but in this we did see drop frames. Now in terms of the overall stabilization it was great even on the 2x and 5x modes and even in the ultra wide angle mode and video recording was pretty good overall but it was not quite as revolutionary as we would have expected considering how good the photography modes were. 
Now there are two other features that come under the filter set of categories, namely art portrait filters, and they are mono as well as bokeh. So mono is basically selective coloring where it focuses on a subject and monochromes everything else except the subject. This works fairly well, but then again, we did see some edge bleeding where colors bled onto other products or other objects. And this was especially evident if your surroundings were quite colorful and there was a lot of color going around. Of course, now coming to the bokeh mode, which works kind of like portrait mode video, this did a better job. And of course, in this, it's also harder to notice the difference like in the mono mode. But then again, we felt that the overall edge detection and blurring was done much better and in a more subtle way that seemed more realistic as well. Time-lapse videos can be captured at a maximum resolution of 1080p and the same goes for slow motion videos as well where you can capture 120fps at 1080p or 240fps at 720p. Here's a quick sample shot at 720p and 240fps. Overall, if you're looking for a really great camera phone, I think the Vivo X50 Pro fits the bill, particularly if you're focused on the primary camera, portrait mode, low light performance, etc. And even in terms of the telephoto reach. Where the X50 Pro can actually be improved is particularly in terms of the video mode as well as the front facing camera. And while I have my reservations on how the front facing camera is going to perform even with updates, I feel that the video mode definitely can be fixed. And overall, the X50 Pro is one of the best camera phones that I've tried this year and definitely the most fun I had when using a camera owing to the various filters and other effects that it gives to the user that definitely helps improve their photography game. I just wanted to show you something that's really, really cool. So this is how the overall camera setup looks of the X50 Pro from Vivo. But what's really special is the gimbal based OIS sensor that is the primary camera and what Vivo has done is something really interesting and uh, they have actually sent out a launch day invite so this is technically launching tomorrow that is the 16th of July 2020 and they have actually sent out an invite which actually carries the exact same sensor that's been used for the primary camera so looking at this we can actually see in action how this sort of works in the real life so technically i can show you on screen in b-roll like as to how this actually moves and stuff but i'm actually going to show the hardware components to you in detail and then you will get a better idea on how well this works in terms of the overall stabilization so this here is the x50 pro as you know it so i'll just zoom in a bit so you guys can get a proper understanding and look at the sensor itself so the primary sensor with the gimbal optical image stabilization is right here this is a 48 megapixel custom sony imx 598 sensor and this here is the sensor that they have sent across to us so this is in seal pack uh, with silica gel obviously to avoid moisture as well as dust but i'm just opening it so that you guys can get a closer look at this and see just how it works now this here is the sensor itself if you can see um, it's it's a pretty large sensor and it's actually housed within the uh, what do you say glass over here but let's try and remove this so you can get a closer understanding on how this actually works so we actually removed the protective cover the glass that was covering this and now you can see the sensor directly with the lens and you can also see how it actually uh, you know stabilizes itself so apart from just doing a regular horizontal and vertical sort of movement this actually adds a third axis which does a bit of rotation which is what actually gives it that extra effect and allows it for much smoother and more precise stabilization compared to most of the typical optical image stabilization that you've seen so when i show you the b-roll on screen you can see what it does when it's calibrating it moves in uh, an angular direction which is not usually common in most phones considering that they just move either uh, in one direction that is horizontally or just vertically generally it's just vertically to uh, avoid the vertical shakes or sometimes even horizontal uh, for a more advanced OIS system but in this case you can see that it's it's angular and it actually moves all the way around very much like uh, you know an arm or like a real gimbal for that matter and that's why you get such stable footage with this and this is definitely really interesting to see and thanks to Vivo for sending it out it's a very cool invite and also one that you know we can showcase to you guys to give you a better understanding on how things work so very impressed by the camera so far now uh, i hope that you have watched the review and understood everything there is to know about the vivo x50 pro camera setup 
please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next one.